In this video, we're going to discuss the solution to question 13 for, from the practice final exam for math 1220. And in this series, or in this question, we're given the series, which is just sum, where n ranges from 1 to infinity, of 3n minus 1 over n plus 1. And all of that, that whole fraction is raised to the nth power. We're supposed to first determine whether the series is absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. So you should indicate as such. So if you think it's absolutely convergent, um, you can just circle it on the page or just write down absolutely convergent or whichever the other ones are. Now, it's not good enough just to answer, right? This is not a multiple choice question. This is a free response. So you do have to show your work uh, in the process of doing this. And this it means you include any convergence test you're using um, and that can get kind of complicated at times, right? So if we were like to say, oh, this, I'm going to com limit comparison this to something else, right? Maybe maybe that's sort of the approach you want to take. Maybe you're saying that I'm going to do a limit comparison of this thing to the sum where n goes from 1 to infinity of, say, maybe 3n over n raised to the n. You know, you might do some type of limit comparison there. Well, I should see then what's the limit, right? Um, why are these things comparable using the limit comparison test? We should be looking at the limit of that of that thing, recognizing the limit goes to one. Um, then we're like, oh, this is convergent by such and such reason. So you would mention why you think this thing is convergent. And then you would mention the limit comparison test to say why that one's convergent. Uh, you know, that, that's just an option right here. And that's that might be a path that some of us take. Um, for this one, I think an actually an easier approach would be to use the root test for this one. Um, this is sort of like the little brother of the ratio test who just tags along. And although it seems annoying for the most part, does turn out to be useful every once in a while, right? Uh, especially when someone has to take the blame for something that the, the older brother did, right? So we want to use the root test here. Because of this nth power for the entire expression, the root test works out really nicely. So for the root test, we need to consider the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of our sequence 3n minus 1 over n plus 1 raised to the uh, raised to the nth power right there. And so because of the nth root, when you combine it with the nth power, they cancel out very nicely. So we have to take the limit as n goes to infinity of just the absolute value of 3n minus 1 over n plus 1. And so notice in this situation that as this is a balanced rational function, as this is a balanced rational function, uh, this thing will converge towards 3 over 1, particularly 3. And so as this limit is greater than 1, this tells us that, well, then we can conclude, that the series, uh, the series is divergent. It's divergent by the root test. And so that would be the answer we get that if we use the root test as an approach. Now, admittedly, if you don't want it to be so wordy, that's okay. Um, if you just said something like, oh, look, we took the limit and we timed out the limits greater than one, cite the root test. If you just mention its name, that's okay. Um, but then you should indicate that, okay, it's divergent. Some, some are, somehow or another, I should know that you believe the series is divergent. That the reason you believe it's divergent is because you use the root test. And since you're using the root test, you have to show me the limit calculation associated to the limit test, or the root test, uh, which is right here. If you're using the ratio test, I want to see the limit, uh, the, the limit calculation involved with the ratio test. If you're using the limit comparison test, Right. What's the limit? Your what's the limit calculation if using the comparison test? What are you comparing to? So you need to provide the evidence that's not just mention the the test, but what are the details? What are the assumptions? What are the what's the criteria necessary to use that test? Now this one turns out to be pretty easy. I I feel if you recognize the root test as the right tool, uh, the ratio test works out okay. It is a little bit more messy then uh, the root test, the root test works perfectly here. But this question number 13 here, this is a street fighting type question. It could be anything. Um, it could use the root test like this one. It could use the ratio test, the integral test, right? Uh, it could be a geometric series for all we know. Um, and so be, be able to, you know, prove the convergence or divergence of any of these things. It will distinguish between absolute convergence and conditional convergence. And, and so do be aware of that. Absolute convergence is actually usually what we can see when it turns out to be convergent, because like with this sequence right here, everything, 
all this terms in the sequence are positive, so it's convergence, it's gonna have to be absolutely convergent. So I would wanna caution the viewer right here is, can you prove that something is conditionally convergent? And you actually have a video of such an example linked on the screen right now, uh, because to show that something's conditionally convergent, it would require that you show that it's convergent, oftentimes using the alternate series test, but it's also not absolutely convergent. So there are two important ingredients, an omission of one, uh, would be some forfeiture of some points there.